Greetings, everyone. And thank you so much, James. It is indeed an auspicious occasion to be in any space to speak on behalf of my ancestors. And I say my ancestors because I am one of the descendants of the 15 million Africans taken to this part of the land. I'm from Jamaica, I'm in Jamaica. And I just wanna say that even more so auspicious in this month, having this event, is that the month, the month of March, we celebrate Zero Discrimination Day, that was March 1, International Women's Day, March 8, International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination coming up March 21, and most fitting for this discussion, the International Day for the Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade, that is March 25th. I want to use this opportunity also to extend thanks to the Association of Former British Colonies for utilizing your platforms to ventilate these issues, important issues affecting the population left on these islands, formerly owned and now operated through constitutional monarchy style governance by the colonial powers. My role is to speak to the clear case for reparatory justice for the victims, descendants of the transatlantic slave trade and uh, indigenous peoples of the Caribbean and their descendants. And I am, I am saying that because we do not always seem to recognize the indigenous people of the Caribbean and their descendants given the distorted views of history, the genocidal conditions, but they are still alive in Dominicas and other countries and they must be recognized and reparatory justice must also be sought for them. I do not speak for the National Council on Reparation, the Center for Reparation or CARICOM, though I am a consultant to the NCR and the CRR. But as I said earlier, I speak as a defendant of the 15 million enslaved Africans and as a lawyer, historian, scholar, activist who have spent the majority of my adult life interrogating the uninterrogated and perfecting my moral obligation to my ancestors to always remember. So I speak today on behalf of the ancestors and those of us who continue to suffer. The case is that the African is a wronged race that has not received even an apology for those who committed the most brutal crimes against us. Although our case is well laid out with both, both historical and ongoing evidence to substantiate the claim, still not even an apology. From my perspective and from those of us who signal reparatory justice for the enslaved and indig indigenous population, we have managed to embark on extensive research. We have managed to overview the historical facts, and we've come up with three significant and equally important elements to make the case in front of any tribunal, anywhere, at any time. We have identified the crime. We have identified the victims, which we put together as the claimants and the defendants. Now, the claimants, the victims as identifiable groups are distinct. Over 400 year period of African chattel slavery, it is estimated that 15 million Africans were stolen from their homes and forcibly transported and relocated to the Caribbean as enslaved chattel and property of Europeans. As a result of the brutal conditions of slavery, when the odious system came to an end on the, in the late 19th century, Less than 2 million people of African descent remain from those genocidal practices. The trade in enslaved bodies and the practice of enslavement were highly commercial businesses for certain nations in Europe. In the countries of the Caribbean were confined to the roles of producers and exporters by a system designed to extract value from the region to create maximum wealth in Europe. Much of the wealth that exists in those nations today in Europe is the creation of that system of human and economic exploitation on which there's no statute of limitation. 
also as a result of European conquest and colonization, the indigenous people within the member states of CARICOM have been subjected to forced migration within country and across region to brutal work condition and genocide. Indigenous peoples were brutalized. The facts show and killed. The facts record that they were militarized, seized, their lands were seized, out of the 3 million people in 1700, remain 30,000 in the year 2000. This led to the destruction of not just bodies, but languages, culture, heritage, irreparable damage to an entire generation. The identified defendants are also documented. They are in the form of European colonizers and traders. So far, we have identified Denmark, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, Spain, Portugal, and of course, the United Kingdom of Great Britain. The case against Britain. Evidence collected by the Center of Operation will tell you that Britain played a dominant role in the enslavement of Africans. The brutal nature of the great tragedy and the demographic disaster that was plantation slavery was a feature of Britain's livelihood. It was estimated that a total of 5.5 million Africans were trafficked to the British colonized Caribbean over two centuries. But by the time 1834 came around, just 800 remain. It spoke to the brutal conditions on Britain plantation, the lack of treating enslaved population as humans. It is seen that it was up until the end of the slave trade in 1807 that any attention was given to repopulating because the enslaved bodies were used and discarded because they could always go back and get more Africans to come. In case studying Jamaica, it is seen that Jamaica was under British rule for 183 years of enslavement from 1655 to 1838. Thereafter, 1962 as a colony of Britain and to the present as the constitutional head of state. Between 1750 and 1807, when the, the trading enslaved people were abolished, Britain dominated the buying and selling of enslaved people to the Americas. Persons were seized from different parts of Africa and transported against their will for sale to settlers to work on plantations in enslavement, deprived of their dignity like any other piece of machinery of the agricultural industry and operated by the planters. The esti estimated 1.5 million who arrived in Jamaica were dispersed to plant plantations throughout the island in enslavement, undiscriminating on origin, status, culture, and language. As strangers to each other, they worked side by side for the economic benefit of the planters in Jamaica and in Britain. Now, their enslavement under British rule lasted, as I said, for 183 difficult years, working without compensation or compassion, without hope or relief from their misery until death or by manumission by an act of the UK parliament. Today, Britain celebrates its prosperity while an entire population of people in these island states are bemoaning a past of mankind's greatest tragedy. Finally, in making the element, what is the crime? All the European member states, we're saying UK at the top of the list, are parties to the claim for reparatory justice. They have instructed genocidal actions upon indigenous communities. They have created the legal, financial, and fiscal policies necessary for the enslavement of the Africans. They have defined and enforced African enslavement and native genocide as in their national interest. They have 
refuse compensation to the enslaved with the ending of their enslavement. They have imposed a further 100 years of racialized apartheid upon the emancipated and refused to acknowledge such crimes or to compensate victims and their descendants. Today, we're seeing, especially when it comes to the pandemic and all the spin off of a global crisis, we're seeing evidence showcasing a situation of developing nations unable to cope with the ever changing global phenomenon. It is a fact that the descendants of native, native Caribbean people and the descendants of enslaved Africans post slavery experiences are poverty, marginalization, and social exclusion. This remains true today as the institutionalized racism of the colonial era has had a debilitating impact on Africans and, and people of African descent. In essence, colonialism has economically disenfranchise us all. We demand reparation. We demand reparation, and let us be clear, when we say we demand reparation, we are not making an ask. We're not making an ask for grants, for aid from European nation, more specifically from the UK. Reparation is not asking for handout. Reparations of the victims and descendants of the transatlantic slave trade and the victims of native genocide and indigenous population is not asking for loans or favors to be extended towards the developing world. The demand for reparation is just that, a demand for what is owed. Reparation is defined as redressing a wrong. It is a term applied to money or other compensation made to other international entities. The concept of reparation is not alien. So when we hear persons saying, get over it, or that is just something unheard of, that is not so. I am here to put on the table that international law recognizes that nations or individuals who have wronged other nations or individuals should make reparation. The Permanent Court of International Justice holds that reparation must wipe out all the consequences of the illegal act and reestablish the situation which would in all probability have existed if the act had not been committed. The World Conference Against Racism, Racial Inequality, Discrimination, Xenophobia and Related Intolerance in September 2011 declared that slavery and the slave trade are crime against humanity and should have always been. So especially the transatlantic slave trade. And finally, let me put forward that the concept of reparation was never alien to Britain, the US or the European thinking, but it shows up when we speak about Africans, we speak about what is due to us. It shows up that racism is still alive and well. Who dare the black people to want to seek repair? But there on the other hand, Germany paid Israel an estimated $60 billion for the exigencies of the Holocaust in Nazi Germany. Nobody objected to that. Japanese Americans received an apology and 20,000 per persons from the US for unjust racial discrimination treatment. Nobody opposed to that. The US also made reparation payments to Native American Indians of 1.3 billion and large areas of reserves as a result of their claim to reparation. No objections to that. I can go on because I want for persons to understand that racism is why we are still here at the table talking about what we are owed and what we deserve. I will hold for questions. I hope I did not go over my time.